Hello, this is Dr. Graves from the CSUN Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is the second part of a tutorial on how to test using ANOVA to determine if three samples or more were drawn from essentially a same population or if they represent uh, perhaps three different populations, or at least two out of the three different. So th this data that you see in front of you is what was sampled from a census tract map of the San Fernando Valley. There are columns of data here that indicate the number of donut shops, pharmacies, oh, this one's pharmacies, and medical marijuana uh, dispensaries in the valley and what we want to ask the software is are those neighborhoods where those businesses operate are they essentially the same or are they substantially or significantly different so what i think might be the smartest thing to do is to highlight and copy certain amount of this data so let's let's start with column p here and highlight to the right all the way over to AB, which includes the column for uh, dispensaries here called collective. And I'm doing that um, with shift right arrow, and then I'm going to press uh, control shift and down, which will highlight that entire block of data. I'm going to press control C to copy it, and I'll put it in a new. Uh, sheet and I'm going to paste it as uh, values, which helps clean the data up a little bit, so we can we can see it. So there's a percentage of people in those neighborhoods that are Hispanic, uh, white people who don't speak Spanish, percent black, percent Asian, uh, minority. And so let's uh, I think. Um, given it's the San Fernando Valley, that I don't think percent black or well, percent Asian, percent black won't be very interesting because there are just um, too few. So I'm going to take that out. But the minority one is interesting. Uh, that's a bachelor's degree. I'm going to take that out too just to, to sort of clean it up. And let's uh, take out uh, per capita income and median house value as well. Just um, so we only have a few columns here to work with. Let's just make it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to rename column F Donut and this one Pharmacy. I'll leave this one as Collective because these are the dispensaries. Um, and I may call them dispensaries from time to time. And it's just a count of how many. So, so this, um, this neighborhood, whatever it is, has two uh, dispensaries. And this one has two pharmacies. And this one has uh, three dispensaries, one pharmacy, but no donut shop. And if we go down here, here's a, a census tract that's got a little bit of all of them. So here's how we're going to do this, and I, I suppose this is the easiest way to do it. I'm going to click on Donut, and I'm going to ask the software to sort the data A to Z. There's several different ways to do that. And what then I have is a list of neighborhoods that have a donut shop and I can see that there it should be 93 so I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here I'm going to put some X's across and just below that I'm going to type count and I want to know how many neighborhoods um, out of these 348 census tracts well, we'll get a count in a moment. Um, so here's what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this data here. Once, twice, 
three times, four times, five times. So I have one of these for each of the columns. And so uh, if I wanted to make the median household income column uh, green, then this set of references also would be uh, green. And it didn't get the X's at the bottom. That would have been useful. Okay, so how do I do this? So that's that's represents that. So um, let's do a couple of them. Let's um, make the uh, percent non-white. I could uh, make that uh, column. I don't know. Let's make that pink and pink. So so we have you know a an indication of what we're looking at. And so what I want to do very quickly is to grab the data from percent or non-Hispanic whites from that um, cell. Wherever there's a one, I want the value in cell B2. So I want to copy that all the way down so that each of these cells has the value for percent. I'm going to sort the data then by this column, pharmacy, and I'm going to actually ask it for the exact same data uh, from B2. Copy it down so each of these cells has that data, and then I'll sort it one more time by collective equals B2. Copy. All right, and so then I might want to rename these, I don't know if you want to, donut, um, and we'll just put a W, come on, W for white, and farm white, and collective white, and then perhaps go to the bottom, and then get the count. from cell I2 to I349, 93. You can copy this under all of these X's all the way across just so you have a peace of mind regarding uh, your count and you should have that every time. Now in order to run the ANOVA test, since we have our samples here, of our mean percentage of uh, white people per neighborhood in these three samples. We have to click on the data tab, click data analysis, find a NOVA single factor from the list. Now if you don't have data analysis, I should point out, you got to click on uh, cancel, click on file, go to options, Go to add-ins. Down at the bottom, manage Excel add-ins. Click go and make sure analysis tool pack is checked. Back here to data, data analysis, ANOVA, single factor, OK. And it's going to prompt you for the cell values that you want. And so we want all of these values that are in pink. So I highlighted them, and it's, uh, in this case, something like I1 to K349. We have labels in the first row, which is important to make sure those are in here. And then our alpha stands for our confidence interval, and we have 0.05, so it's uh, sort of 95% is on the other end of that, or the, other, the flip side of that, and 95%. And once you have it set up like this, it's going to create a new worksheet ply, which will be down here, and it'll be called uh, probably sheet 2. So click OK, and there it ran. I'm going to rename sheet 2 to ANOVA 
percent white and here's the F value which is uh, an important value and it is at 4.29 and the critical value what you had to achieve in order to argue that these are not drawn from the same underlying population was 3.03 .03. and so that number is larger than that number. Normally this, uh, this critical value is 1.96 in a lot of the things that we look at. And the, the p-value here is 0.014 and all we were looking for was 0.05. So we've uh, exceeded that. So this argument that we could make is that we're reasonably confident that the average for percent white donut shops is 30, pharmacies is 41, and collectives is 36, that these neighborhoods, at least in terms of the percentage of white people, are not the same, that they're not drawn from the same population. So I'm going to go back here to sheet one. I'm going to run this exact test one more time so you could see it but also so we can do one more test. I'll sort by donut shops over here. This is going to be uh, don uh, donut um, income and then pharmacy income and collective income. Let's get the data for income, which was in green. Copy that, paste it over top of all of the values in column T, leave the blanks blank, sort by pharmacy income, one more time, get our income data, copy down, and then sort one more time by collectives, this time collectives, income in neighborhoods that have dispensaries, copy it down, and then um, go back to the data tab, click data analysis, ANOVA single factor, okay. Uh, we don't want to rerun this, so let's go over here to T1 and scroll down until we have all of this highlighted, not the X's. Click okay because the rest of it is set up click. This is now ANOVA and we find that the F value in this instance is 3.05. Um, we only needed to achieve 3.03 .03, so we are just barely confident that these averages are different. I think if you run a couple of the others you will find that uh, depending on the, the value that you've used, that maybe these neighborhoods aren't all that different. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial video.